All right, uh, we've been looking at the last couple of classes at things that we can do to make our UI more um, easily maintained. All right. And we saw a couple examples of this. And again, the, the idea is that we don't want to do anything more than once. So if we add a page, we only want to put it in the navigation one time. You know, we don't have to, we don't want to go through and find every page that has navigation on it and go and change that to add the new page. All right. So, um, we have things such as a master page, all right, where we can create the shell of a page that contains um, common code, code that's going to be on, on every page. And what kind of code can we put in, in the master page? Anything that we could put on a normal ASPX page. So we can put HTML, we can put JavaScript, we can put CSS, we can put ASP.NET controls. We also put content placeholders, and content placeholders are sort of the blank in which um, each detail page fills in, all right? So we have our common content, and we have our content that's specific to each pages. And on the master page, the uh, content area um, is, is defined by a content placeholder. And by default, you get one in the header, one in the body. Uh, but you can certainly extend that. Now, we also looked at how to do um, menus and create the navigation. Again, that's very similar to the calendar control in that that's something that everyone could write. All right? Given enough time and, and experience, I'm confident every one of you could write a menu like that. But the point is, is why bother? You know, someone else did it. You can use it. It's been thoroughly tested. Um, not to say it will necessarily be perfect or bug free, but it has been thoroughly tested and you can just drop that control on your page and, and take advantage to it, uh, of it. So I think we're going to finish this up today and I think on next Wednesday I'm going to talk specifically about your project and then go into the next section of the class. Uh, an announcement, October 8th there will be no class. That is not this Thursday, but next Thursday. So consider that a work day, because I know you will all be working from 10.15 until 12.20. You can take a short break if you want, but, but work on, and working on stuff for this class. So, um, I, so I will not be in class um, that day. All right, I will post that to Canvas, but I thought I'd give you guys uh, a heads up. All right, let me download what we had last time. I don't know if I was talking with you guys last week. I don't remember like what days things happen, but I I have I found the rabbit's weak spot. <laughs> All right. The weak spot is yogurt covered banana chips. So, like, I can get them to come back in their cage, like, by, like, putting a little tray of yogurt-covered banana chips, and they'll, they'll go and eat them. So, even the, even the one that doesn't trust me very well. The big rabbit really trusts me. The big rabbit goes up to me you know, all the time. But the little one is very skittish around me. But even, even she will, she, she's taken them out of my hand. So, she, she likes the, the banana chips as well. The, yesterday, I did see the cutest thing I have seen in my life. They were eating opposite ends of a carrot, and they were moving towards each other like that. It was like, aww. Wish I had a camera, but I didn't. Personal problem. Pardon me? Personal problem. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, so let's open up. On the other hand, this is a software development, web development class. I mean, that's the kind of problems we deal with all the time in here, right? I mean, <laughs> so come on, back off, man. <laughs> all right. So let's, let's take a minute to review what we did um, last time, and let's extend it to do a couple more things.
first of all, we have our master page. And as I said, the master page is set up so that it is like any other ASPX page, except it has a couple of areas where we can put our common code, placeholders. These are the blanks that are, get filled in by the specific page. So in this case, we have our CSS file in the master page. We have... Um, our menu, our navigation scheme in there, um, and there are two content placeholders, one here and one in the head section if you wanted to put something, something specific in the body or specific in the head for that given page. All right. Now remember, the, these pages, these master pages aren't served up by the server. All right, these are just part of a page. You have to serve up an ASPX page, and therefore when you create uh, an ASPX page, you specify the master page that it ought to use as its basis. And then you fill in the content areas. So, in our default page, we have a modest little piece of text. This is my site about rabbits. And when we run it, we will get the page consisting of two pieces. One chunk of code came from the master page. One chunk came from the specific default.aspx. So, this came from the specific ASPX. Everything else came from the master page. And the nice thing is, is, is if we make a change on the master page, the change automatically reflects through all of the changes that we have. The other thing, or the other pages that use that master page. We put in a little menu. And again, remember when we styled this last time, we looked at the HTML code. Um, that's why it's important to understand that this ASPX files create HTML pages. We don't want that to be a mystery how that happens. We want to really understand it and we want to be able to look at the HTML that got generated and determine what our hooks are to style stuff. So if you remember last time, um, we created a style for not level one, I think level two. All right, and we did that because level two, um, those links had a transparent background, and we couldn't see the links up against um, up against uh, the text behind it. So we added a, a background that matched the color of the rest of the page. Okay, so it's important to understand the HTML that gets generated because that will give you the hooks to hook your CSS to. All right, I don't know if I told you about me writing a chapter for a textbook about ASPX pages, oh, yeah, ASP.net, yeah. Yeah. yeah, where the person was adamant about, like, oh, yeah. don't talk about the HTML that gets generated. It's like, you don't know how to create ASPX pages if you don't take into account the HTML that gets generated. Nice thing is, is we get this behavior of being able to get our menu, and it's consistent. If we were to add other things to the page, to, uh, or to our site, we could just put them in the one navigation and they'll be changed everywhere. The menu, 
Again, remember the menu exists on the master page. And it consists of a series of items. I can view the properties of that. And I can edit the menu items to add more things. And I can define the structure of the site and put them in so I can have things underneath other things and so on. This is a, this is a good way to do it. Later on in class today, we're going to come up with another way to do that. All right. Here we have the, the, the links sort of like hard-coded in the control. And that's not bad. You know, that still is a big deal, right, if we could put that on a master page. The problem with hard coding is typically that if you do it, um, then you have to change it every place that you have hard coded it. Well, with the master page, we've probably only coded it once here, so it's not that big of a deal. But we'll find an even better way to do it um, towards the end of class. All right, there are three things I want to cover today, I think. Um, one of them is nested master pages. One of them is the tree control. And one of them is the sitemap file slash sitemap path, more commonly known as breadcrumbs. Let's talk about nested master pages first. All right. Right now in my little site here, every page has an identical structure. So if I go from page to page, they all look the same. And maybe that's what your site is. It might be that your site is like that, that you want to have identical stuff on every single page. For larger sites, though, there may be some level of consistency, but there might also be some kind of variance. Let me bring up something I do not believe is a paradigm of good design, but it will get the point across. within the academic program section has the same sub-navigation here for the most part. All right. Now every page has this on top of it. So we have something that's common to all pages. Then we have, a, and this is common to all pages, but this little area here, there's different ones depending on what section of the site you're in. So if you're in, you know, academic programs, you see this. If you're in, you know, campus life and recreation, there's a different set of links there and so on. So it's not identical on every page, but pages within a certain section share something in common. You can accomplish that in... Um, ASP.NET by using nested master pages. So I can create a master page using another master page. And then I can use that second master page for like all the pages within a section. So let's say, for example, I'm going to create a, fair, uh, a care and feeding section for my rabbit site. All right. I want to put on every single page that I am not a vet or an expert in rabbits. I just have some rabbits and, you know, I want to put a disclaimer on every single one of those pages. All right. And maybe there'd be some other stuff that I'd put too. Maybe a link to my vet, you know, to say, look, if you run into trouble, call these folks. They'll be able to help you out or something like that. All right. But I don't want to do it on every page in the site, but I want to do it on every page within a certain section of the site. Okay, so what we can do is we can nest master pages and create the second master page that will be used to clone all the pages in the care and feeding section. So, let's go and do that. I'm going to go here and file new 
file. Master page. Notice I can still pick master page there. Select master page. So I'm going to create a master page that's based on another master page. I then, right now I only have one, so I'm going to pick that. And I get my second master page. Now the second master page is just like another page that is, it's just like any page that we've cloned from a master page, right? We get those two sections that we can put stuff in. All right? That's the same thing we have with any of our pages. All right? But the one thing we can put in here is we can put a content placeholder. Or actually... I'm going to do this. I'm going to put, first of all, my disclaimer within my content area that's going to say, I am not <coughs> of that. I am just a pet owner. Google any real problems. <laughs> All right. And then I can put a content placeholder in there. I'm going to change the name to Content Placeholder 3 so I don't get confused with the other Content Placeholders. All right. And now I can create another page. I can create my Karen Feeding page. And I can choose between now. I probably should have given that one a, second, a special name, Karen Feeding. All right. Remember, you want to name things carefully. You want to name things in a meaningful way. Um, like, you don't know how many projects I get turned in with the name Web Project One or something like that. You know, that will do you no good six months from now if you're looking for a particular thing that you worked on. All right. So I go in here, and I can go in and I can put the specific content in for Karen Feeding. This section will discuss care and feeding. Alright. So now when I view this page, this page will be comprised of stuff from three separate files. There'll be the common stuff that's on every single page. There'll be the stuff that comes from the second master page, the care and feeding page. And then finally, there'll be the stuff specific to this care and feeding home page. So if I run this and look... All right, this came from the specific page, this came from the second master page, the rest of the stuff came from the first master page. So you can nest that if you want. Uh, I felt obligated to show you that. For your projects, you can do this if you feel that you need to and it will help your project, but that's not like a requirement. You ought to have a master page for your project, right? Because if you go and add a new page, you don't want to go through all your ASPX pages and, and add it to uh, add uh, a link to that or whatever. Or you decide to put something different in a header. You don't want to have to go and make that change over and over. So you should have at least one master page. But 
nested master pages can come in handy too to solve particular problems. Questions about this? All right. I'm going to show an alternate navigation. All right. And I'm going to do it on a totally separate page. Um, just, I don't know, just, just, just so that we can isolate um, that. All right. Now remember, with or let me let me run it again. Notice the behavior of this navigation. Remember, there's properties that we can put in that show how many levels that we show. Um, and as we mouse over, that displays. As we mouse out, it disappears. That's one way to do a navigation. But another way that you can do a navigation is sort of like Windows File Explorer. Right? If I go into a folder, Notice what I can do. I can expand or contract any of these nodes. So I can see all the detail of these. Or I can contract them. And it stays that way until you change it. So that's a different sort of, of model for having a navigation. So one model of navi having the navigation is have the mouse over where it stays until you move your mouse out and then it goes away. Another model is to have sort of the, the file explorer type tree view where you click on each individual thing and you can expand it or contract it. So I'm going to go and I'm going to make a tree view. And I'm going to make it on a totally separate page. This is just to demonstrate a tree view. This doesn't have anything to do with rabbits. So I'm going to create a web form, but it, I'm not going to pick a master file. I'm just going to, I'm just going to create, because all I want to see is the tree view. All right. Put that tree view right there. And I can edit this. Edit nodes. And I can go and do almost the same thing I did with um, the menu view, all right? In object-oriented terms, these are, I'm sure, these have a common ancestor object, all right? Because they have a lot of the same behavior that just, or they have a lot of the same attributes and, and behaviors, just how particular behaviors are implemented are different. So I could go in and I could add a root node and say, you know, Let's say I had a, um, um, a page uh, for this semester, fall 2015, and maybe the URL is fall2015.aspx. I can then go and add a child node. I could add a, whoops, I didn't want to do that. I could add a child node for each of my classes. So I'll make this one, we'll say CISS216. And it calls CISS216. Yes.
So then I can go and add children to each of these, which I'll just go do a couple under CISS 216. So I'll add a child, add a child, and we can promote or demote. So like if we got the leveling wrong, we could, we could make something up a level or push something down a level. So, you know, lab one, and I'll put in the navigate URL. menu control we had properties we could show how many levels we want to show all right we could say whether we want it uh, vertically or horizontally oriented with all these controls you have properties that you can go in and you can change uh, again let's look at the we had how long it dis how long after we mouse out that it disappears? So this is 500 milliseconds, uh, in other words, half a second. So if you notice, when I pulled my mouse out, it didn't immediately disappear in 500 milliseconds. I hope you notice that it wasn't like 498 or anything like that. But you could tweak it uh, to to make it look that way. Um, what other relevant ones do we have? The orientation. The separation character. How many levels to display initially? Or the maximum, or never mind. No, that's not that. Forget that. Forget what I said. Static levels, that's what I meant to, to say. That's how many levels. So it will go down to level one. All right. So you have all these parameters that you can control. And you have the same thing on the tree view. If we look at the tree view, we can say we can't have it oriented horizontally, I don't think. But we can um, choose how many levels to show, I think. Maybe not. All right, we, we have properties. Oh, expand depth, fully expanded. So I will say when it starts out, it will be showing everything. Or I can make it when it starts out show only one level, level zero. Or I can make it show up to one level. So you can set all those properties. Almost any, how, how do I want to say this? Many aspects of the way that a ASPX control behaves, you can, you can set via a property. So you don't want to see all of them, there's a property for that. So part of the challenge of ASPX coding is being able to identify, okay, what's the property I want to change to make it do this? All right. So it pays to become familiar with the controls and the things that you commonly do with those controls. Also remember that we can dynamically change that. We can, we can change that um, anytime we want to by writing um, AS, uh, C sharp in the code behind. So now when I run this, I have my tree view. And it starts out like that, because that's what I said, right? And we can go and we can contract it, expand it, do anything we want to it. So, this is also a valid navigation technique. You could do this instead of the menu view, all right? And, you know, hey, not bad. You, know, you could do it that way, all right? So you have choices on how to do it, and you, you pick which one makes sense for your given situation, which control that you have. Could you imagine your users benefiting from being able to do that, or would that just add extra uh, clutter to the screen? All right, last item for today, and this might be rarer than the supermoon eclipse combination that we got on Sunday night. That is, I might finish early today. 
Yeah, what? All right. Um, and that is a site map. Now, before we talk about the site map, we have to talk about XML. All right, who can tell me what XML is? Extensible markup language. person's name, 
their score on assignment one, their score on assignment two, their score on assignment three. Maybe separated by commas. And so on down the line. That's a flat file. In other words, there's no formatting there. You have to be smart enough to know that the first column is a person's name, the second column is their grade on assignment one, or the third column is their grade on assignment two, and so on. All right? These kind of files, you have to build the knowledge into the program. So the program has to know those things. With XML, you actually tag the data. So here's how I might do that same scoring in XML. I might have a grades tag. It tells me right off the bat I'm dealing with grades here. This isn't like um, how many minutes late they were for class or something like that, right? So, Describe the data, right? And I could do that for the other students in here. That my grade list consists of a bunch of students. First student has a property of name of Mike, and their score for lab one is 10, their score for lab two is two, their score for lab three is three. All right? Now, if me and whoever's using this data on the other end understands the format of this, it's real easy. We can write classes that understand XML and can take that data from this format and put it in a format that's usable. All right? Because this is much more highly structured. All right? We tell, we describe the data. All right? Now, as you can imagine, XML files are bigger or smaller than flat files. Bigger, way bigger. Um, like by a factor of 10 sometimes, all right? And could even be more, depending, I guess, on the data. So there's extra data, right? But that extra data can provide benefit because then we can write programs that understand XML, and we can write generic objects that can process XML, and then we just have to write some specific code to handle the details. So how does this come in to sitemaps? Guess what the sitemap file is? The sitemap file is an XML file. All right? So if we put our site's structure in a sitemap XML file, then a lot of good things happen. All right? Because we can then use that chunk of data in several different places if we need to. So that's what we're going to see now. All right. So I'm going to go here. And I'm going to Go up to File, New, File, and I will create a sitemap file. All right. Click down. It gives us a start of our XML file. Alright. Every XML, X, every XML file has 
what's called a root tag. All right, the root tag is the tag in which every other tag lives. All right. Now, HTML is a little different than XML, but they're definitely cousins, if not siblings. All right, because they kind of came about the same way. What's the root node of an XML, I'm sorry, of an HTML document? What's the, what, what tag contains all the other tags? The HTML. Right. The HTML tag contains the head and body, and then the body contains the rest of the tags, and the head contains some stuff too. So that would be the root node. In the sitemap, the root node is defined as this. Now, just like there's rules, all right, XML doesn't mean mind reader software, all right? <laughs> Just because there's rules about what's a valid XML file doesn't mean that you can put any old thing in here, right? There's rules for what constitutes valid HTML. There's no really important tag in HTML, so you can't put one in. Browsers aren't going to understand it, all right? Similarly, we, uh, the, the rules for an XML file are called the schema. All right, and for example, part of the schema says that a sitemap XML file, the root node has to be a sitemap. There can only be one of them. The other tag that you can have is called a sitemap node, and that's the format of this. All right, so. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and I'm going to fill in these blanks. All right? And then we're going to create a menu that uses a sitemap instead of a menu that uses the hard-coded stuff. So I'll put in here my home page, my root node, is default.aspx, and the title of it is home. These kind of things, by the way, are often called trees, right? Because they have branches. You start with a root, and then you can have tags underneath that, and underneath those tags you can have tags and so on. So it branches out like a tree does. I'm going to go put my other pages in here. And I'm going to start out doing it, I won't say wrong, but not the way that I want to end up. So... Um, what, was, what other page did I have? I had a page for the Flemish Giant. And for the dwarf rabbit. And then finally I had the care and feeding. what I preached there, and I gave it a name that isn't very meaningful. All right, so now we've defined the structure of our site, right? We've put in our tags that say what our pages are. We have a home page. Underneath the home page, we have three pages, all right? I'm now going to go to the master page, and I'm going to change the menu, not to be hard-coded anymore, but to use this data. 
all right? Because this is really where the, the benefit of this comes out. So I'm going to go in here, in my master page, I'm going to click that, and I'm going to say, choose data source. All right, new data source. Where do you, where does the application get the data from? The application could get the data from a site map, which is what we created, or from another sort of XML file. So we could have, we could want to make a tree that wasn't our site map, but was another kind of tree or menu. But I'm going to pick site map and click OK. And now this guy has a data source. All right. This is going to become very important next week when we start talking about databases, right? Because we no longer have hard-coded values for the items of this. We're pointing this guy to say, here's where you get your data. And the data is structured in an XML file in this case. Next week, it'll be coming from a database query. So, but here's the idea then. Let's go and run this, all right? solution is
don't see any difference between these two. Parson. Application name slash local MySQL server public key token blah 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 culture neutral version MySQL web MySQL file. Entry has already been added. Oh. All right. Times like these, I think of what would the great Kenny Rogers do? All right. Kind of look like him, right? I mean, maybe a little bit. I got the white beard. I know when to fold them. So I will go and I will fix this and I will say what's wrong. I'm not really sure. At the, I, I believe it was either at the 4 or 4.5 framework, they changed the way a lot of things were done. So my guess is it's looking for some setting that I don't have set, similar to what happened when I did the validation. So if you remember the validation, I had to put something in the web config file. Um, I don't know off the top of my head, rather than, you know, I know it might be amusing watching me agonize for 15 minutes, probably not all that amusing. So we will call class for, the, for today, and I will finish this up on Thursday. I'll have an answer for you. All right, we'll see you over in lab. Does anyone have any thumb drive I can borrow?